Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, we're going to talk all about leopard geckos and how to take care of your leopard gecko. Stick around. So you want to get yourself a leopard gecko. Great choice. That is one of the best beginner lizards, best beginner reptiles that you can possibly get. So let's talk all about them. I've got to help me with this video here, Millie, my best egg producing female, and one of her babies from 2017, this is Littlefoot. Leopard geckos like Millie and Littlefoot here, in the wild you'd find them in parts of the Middle East, places like India, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, kind of places where it's very dry, rocky outcrops, grasslands kind of places like that. You're not going to find them in a desert full of sand like you'd have a, a pet store have you believe. And just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Thank you guys so much. 500 subscribers this week as of filming this right now. 505. I can't even express in words how thankful I am. Once we get to 600, we're going to do that giveaway which we're going to talk about at the end of the video. But if you want to get started on that now, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. So if you're seriously considering getting any sort of animal, especially a reptile, you want to know how big does this thing get. And with leopard geckos, they're very manageable. When they come out of the egg, like this guy here, who's just two and a half weeks out of the egg, they're going to be about three to four inches uh, in most cases. Sometimes super giants and giants are a little bit bigger to start, but three to four inches is where you're going to get your babies. And then once they grow up to be full grown females, like these girls here, you're going to have smaller females like Littlefoot, and you're going to have bigger ones like Millie, and then you've got giant ones. But on average, you're going to see them between six and eight inches, and then the males are going to be between eight and ten inches. Of course, there are outliers. These are the general guidelines. And I want to make this abundantly clear. This is a how-to guide. This is a care guide, which means that just because I say something and you want to do something else, or you find information elsewhere, it doesn't mean that information is wrong. We all take care of things a little bit differently, but these are the basics you want to stick to. So you know how big these things get, which means that the next question, of course, is how big of an enclosure do I need, or how small of an enclosure do I want to get away with? I like thinking of it the first way. How big of an enclosure do you need? In my opinion, for one adult-sized leopard gecko, 20 gallons is the minimum. I think that a lot of people will tell you 10 gallons. 20 gallons is a better idea. If you want to see the dimensions of a 10 gallon, uh, you can see them right here. And then, of course, a 20 gallon. Check it out over, over my right shoulder here. Of course, you don't have to start at a 20 gallon for a baby. You can get away with something as small as a 5 gallon. And by the way, I don't mean that aquariums are the best source of a, an enclosure for your leopard geckos. I'm just saying the equivalent or the dimensions of. For example, behind me, you see I keep a lot of my leopard geckos in tubs because I do have quite a few leopard geckos. I've got them here, I've got them there, I've got them everywhere. And with uh, these tubs, the 28 quart, in my opinion, is the best size for a fully grown adult leopard gecko, male or female. And then you can get away with a 6 quart or even a, a 12 quart, 16 quart, depending on the brand for a juvenile, but you're going to work your way up to a 28 quart when you have an adult. And of course there's tons of other options too. I've got Exoterras, I've got two that have leopard geckos in them. Josie here is in a uh, 18 by 18 by 18, a cube type Exoterra. And then we've got Littlefoot who's trying to hide from the light here with her, uh, her tank mate Sarah. And those guys, they're in a, a little bit bigger of an enclosure because there are two of them. And for those of you who are clutching their fists because I co-have leopard geckos, we'll get to that in a minute. And with your enclosure, there's going to be some stuff in it, right? Because a plain enclosure with a leopard gecko is not the greatest idea. So what do you need to have inside the enclosure to keep your leopard geckos happy and healthy? Well, first thing, you want a substrate. Now, this is where we're going to get our first rage on. Some people will say absolutely no substrate that is loose. No loose substrate. You have to use paper towel or newspaper or uh, eco carpet, whatever you call it. I think that these are great substrates. I think if you want to use a paper towel, that's great. If you want to use a more economically friendly substitute like a newspaper like I've got in my tubs behind me, these are great because they're very easy to replace. There's no hassle. As soon as you see poop, too many poops, um, you can just get rid of it and replace it with a new one and it's very cheap to do this. However, it doesn't look great. If you want something that is going to be safe for your leopard gecko, most importantly, but also it looks good too, I would stick away from kind of sands that are not natural. And what I mean by that is if you take a sand, a granular sand that's used for like 
uh, sandblasting, for example. They're cut at sharp angles that fit together, and when if you were to put a wet clump of this sand in your hand and just kind of loosen your hand, it would make a ball. And that's what's going to happen inside your leopard gecko too. If you used a, a play sand, which is a more circular sand that doesn't stick together as much, if you have a wet piece of sand or a wet clump of sand in your hand, it'll just start falling out. And that's kind of what's going to happen in your leopard gecko as well. So I think that a washed play sand is safe, but what I do is because in the wild, you're going to find them on more of a soil type, loose soil, dirt, rocky type outcrop, I have a mixture of sand and eco earth. And that is what I keep my leopard geckos in the terrariums on. And they've been completely happy, completely healthy. And I've been doing this for as long as I've had Cheech here. And that's going on nine years. There are some things you want to stick away from. Aspen, for example, is a terrible idea. And then with all reptiles, a pine or cedar shaving, the oils in them will give them respiratory infections. Stay away from that. Go with something like a carpet, eco-earth, uh, sand mixture, or the very, very safe reptile carpet, newspaper, paper towel up to you now on this substrate you're going to need a couple things first of all very important you want some hides now ideally you want three hides and the reason for this is you're going to have a hot side and a cool side which is our next category so you want to hide on the hot side and you want to hide on the cool side so that if they want to hide they feel very safe no matter where they are of course what they also need is a humid hide because they are a drier species of animal and you're going to keep them pretty dry you're going to want something for them to get inside of when it's shedding time and that way they can go ahead and shed pretty freely because it's more more humid inside of there which means you're going to have three hides hot side cool side and then i would suggest keeping that moist hide on the hot side as well and you can get away with having two de dedicated hides one on the hot side and the cool side one of them being a human hide as long as you have a bunch of plants and other stuff for your leopard gecko to hide behind so they can always feel safe and to round out your furnishings very simple water bowl food bowl that's it that's all you really need a substrate um, and of course things like thermometers and hydrometers those are without saying because you want to keep them at the right temperature and that is what we're going to get into next sarah here and all of her kind like it hot and dry they come from a hot and dry place the middle east when you think of that you think of deserts but if you really look at where these guys are found in the wild it's not super sandy it's more kind of uh, like a, the ground that you'd see at outside of the beach you know on the trail to the beach uh, kind of like soil and rocks and things like that that is how you want to keep your leopard geckos hot and dry so the perfect parameters for these guys if you want to keep them on the cool side because you're going to have a thermal gradient cool side somewhere between 74 and 80 right around that range again this is a guide you can go a couple degrees either way and then on your hot side uh, what I like to do is 84 to 88 now you want a basking spot as well and heating these guys is really simple because they don't need any special light requirement you can heat them with a thermostat that is connected to a heat mat and the, the reason I said thermostat first is you can't just put, plug your heat mat into the wall you're gonna cook your animals likely especially if there's a malfunction so what I do is I have got heat tape I've got flex watt heat tape and that is connected to a thermostat underneath my leopard geckos and that's how my racks are wired up as well and I keep the hot spot right around 92 that is where I like to keep it I wouldn't go any hotter than 94 that is considered to be exhaustive temperature for a leopard gecko so to sum it up cool side you want 74 to 80 degrees on the hot side you're gonna get a little bit closer to about 88 at the hot side and then of course you're uh, you, got, you want a basking spot as well because they are nocturnal or crepuscular animals they don't like to bask in the light they like to get their heat from the bottom and that's why you use an underhand heater now of course sometimes you're not going to be able to get away with uh, just an under tank heater you'll need a light source as well and the reason just it's easier to heat this way you can use a thermal heat emitter um, something like that that doesn't actually produce light but has heat from the top as well keep it on the same side as your heat mat so you have that th thermal gradient and then at night you want the temperatures to dip a little bit uh, not too much lower than 70 if lower than 70 at all and by doing that way you can just keep the heat mat on and whatever the other source is off now of course if you don't have a heat source from the top and you have a reptile room like this or your house naturally cools off at night that is perfect you that's going to give you that night drop that is not completely necessary but of course helps create that day night cycle like having lights on for most of the day and this can be accomplished without a light over top of the enclosure just your room light or the lights from the rest of your reptile room for example you want a day and night cycle with any animal leopard geckos are no different 
because if it was always day or always night, well, that'd be really uncomfortable. It'd probably stress your geckos out quite a bit. And just to wrap up the lighting situation, you don't need any special lights at all. If you want to use a UVB light like you would with, say, a bearded dragon or something, you can, but very low, very low percentage, 2%. You don't want a 10% desert basking bulb like you would for a uh, savannah monitor or a tagu or Euromastic, Spirit of Dragon, whatever. You want it to be very low, and especially with animals that are like leopard geckos or come in a ton of morphs that usually or sometimes include albinos, it is debated if that hurts their eyes or not, if the lights are too bright and too intense, especially with the UVB. And along with heat and humidity goes, well, humidity, of course. And their humidity, low, 20 to 40 percent, that's where you want to be. Um, when you miss the tank, because sometimes geckos like to drink off of their plants and enclosure and stuff, it'll get a little bit higher, and at night it tends to get up a little bit higher, but 20 to 40 percent, that's your sweet spot. And to control all these things, just use a timer. Don't have to worry about setting an alarm every day to go turn off your lights or turn off your thermostat or whatever you're doing. Just use a timer. Now let's get into diet. The diet for leopard geckos is pretty darn simple. They eat insects. And that's it. That's all they eat. You don't need to do any prep uh, like you would for a bearded dragon making salads all the time. Uh, as long as you have feeders on hand. And the best feeders for this is a variety. There's no best feeder. Make sure that they get a variety, just like they would in the wild. My favorite is superworms and mealworms. And this is simply because they're really easy to keep. Superworms, keep them at room temperature, and you're good to go. They'll last for a few months. Mealworms, on the other hand, you have to put them in the fridge, but again, they'll last for a little while as well. And you can buy them super cheap. In my area, it's 12 bucks for a thousand mealworms. That's a darn good deal. Considering these guys, you're only going to be feeding them a few feeder insects per day. And really, if you want, you don't have to feed them every day. You could simply feed them once every three days or even get away with once every four days. Uh, and that is the beauty about leopard geckos and the easiness of feeding them. Let's move on to the next thing. One more thing to mention about the diet, which is very easy, obviously, is you want to dust their insects with uh, calcium powder, sometimes D3 as well. I suggest doing some research about the supplementation. That's a video in and of itself that I haven't made yet. Uh, but there is that component of having to dust their insects with some supplements. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. My favorite part about leopard geckos, besides the fact that they're beautiful and really cute and they're kind of funny when their baby's screaming at you, is that they're really easy to handle. Now, it's very difficult to screw this up. A couple basics here. Make sure that you're not grabbing a hold of them too tight. Don't rip their tail off because they do drop their tails. That's part of the behavior that I want to talk about. But in general, they're very placid animals. They don't really mind being handled too much. Once they're babies, when they're really tiny, just like any animal in the wild, if they weren't kind of skittish, trying to get away from you, even trying to bite you, which is hilarious because their mouths, when they bite, it doesn't even feel like they're biting you. They've got these little sandpaper teeth as babies. Um, they're going to be a little bit afraid of you. You're huge and they're not. In comparison to them, you're huge is what I mean. And as they get older, they get a little bit easier. They kind of tame out a bit. And of course, uh, just handle them a little bit when they're babies and it becomes easier that way. Even fully grown leopard geckos, if you don't handle them a lot, tend to be pretty placid animals. Now let's talk about some of the quirks of these cute little lizards. These guys, when they're babies, they scream at you. It's very cute. When they're adults, they kind of make chirping noises if you try to grab them and they don't want to go somewhere like uh, Millie just did. You probably couldn't hear it. It's pretty soft. And some animals don't make any sounds whatsoever. Because they can't stick to walls like some other geckos, the Geico gecko, for example, Cresta geckos, which is another great beginner option and I've got a video about right here. They've got claws because they are animals that are on the ground, which is a reason why you want a longer cage or enclosure rather than a taller one. So these guys, they've got claws and they do feel kind of weird. They feel a little bit different. Um, some people do have like a reaction to them if you're the type of person that gets hives from everything. You might get a little bit red, but there's no, it's not an allergic reaction. They don't venom in their claws or anything like that. And of course, they are basically harmless. They're completely harmless to humans. Now, they do have this cute little tail, which is not prehensile, even though they kind of try to use it like that. And it gets really fat. Like my man Cheech here has a giant fat tail, and that's where they store nutrients. So they can go a long time without eating anything at all or drinking water because they store it in that fat tail of theirs. Now, Millie here, you'll notice, has kind of a thinner tail. She's a breeder, end of the season, done laying eggs. And because she's used a whole bunch of energy, uh, she's got a little bit of a tinier tail. She's used all that energy, so now, we're gonna fatten her up, and then when I show you a video of her in six months, you won't even recognize her because her tail's gonna be so big and plump. But again, don't rip that tail off, don't get too aggressive with it because they can drop it, and all they do, although they do grow it back, it looks different. It doesn't look as good at all. It kind of looks nubby and weird looking. 
And just to speak to the placidness, I didn't forget that she was on here, but it's almost easy to forget when they're on you because as I look at myself in the monitor here, I notice that she hasn't moved at all, basically. And although she's not a true albino, there's a light right there, and it's not bothering her at all. These guys, I wouldn't take them out in direct sunlight, especially if they're albinos, because they are not used to the daylight. However, you can handle them a lot, and it doesn't really stress them out like some other species. Something about the cool factor of these animals that I think goes really well with the behavior uh, is that they eat their shed. So they will shed as they grow older, uh, before they lay eggs, different times during the year and times during their life they'll shed just like most other reptiles, but they'll actually eat it. And that's debated. Is the reason because they're trying to hide their shed to make sure that predators don't know that they were there? Is there nutrients in it? Well, we're not really sure. It depends on which reptile form you read or who you talk to, but I think that's a really cool thing about leopard geckos. And lastly, price and availability. I think this is really important because this video means zero to you if you can't find a leopard gecko. The really great thing is they're probably the easiest uh, next to the bearded dragon of any lizard to find in a reptile store, a regular pet store. Don't go to Petco's and PetSmarts, please. Uh, but reptile expos are a great place and reptile forums uh, will lead you into different places in your area where you might be able to find a reptile, reptile breeder or a reptile shop that specializes just in Things like leopard geckos and snakes and stuff like that, whereas a Petco or PetSmart, they don't really know what they're doing most of the time. And also, they're pretty inexpensive, even for designer morphs, and there's a million of them. There's even ones that mess with their eyes a little bit. Uh, it's called Eclipse. And my girl MC Flurry here is a perfect example of this. She's got that crazy little weirdness of, their, of her eye, which is a recessive gene. Also, you can find things like Max Snows, there's regular Tripper albinos, Bell albinos, Vegas albinos, Rainwater albinos, uh, which are the same thing, by the way. There's three different types of albinos. There are unlimited versions of these geckos, whatever type of color or pattern pattern that you want, it's almost impossible to find something that isn't beautiful to you. And one last thing, this is the part where I expect to get some feedback or clap back as you'd call it, uh, cohabitation. Can you keep two leopard geckos together? The answer, in a word, is yes. In my opinion, it is always safer to keep animals by themselves unless they're animals like mice or rats or something that you need them to have companions, otherwise they get sad. But they're completely fine on their own. If you want to keep one leopard gecko, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people will tell you that's the best or only way to do it. I disagree with this. Um, I think that I've kept leopard geckos together for almost as long as I've been keeping leopard geckos. Littlefoot here and Sarah, uh, is, who is her tank mate, are from the same clutch. They eat from the same food bowl. They, they share the same hides, although they have their own hides if they want them. I think that the important thing is if you're going to cohabitate your leopard geckos, very basic rules. There's a video up here if you want to get more in depth about it, but very easy rules. Never keep two males together. You're going to have only one leopard gecko after about a day and make sure that if you keep a male and a female together, you are ready to have eggs because they might reproduce. The safest way, two females of the same size, same age, and make sure you keep an eye out, observe them, make sure they don't bully each other. And of course, uh, when you're feeding them, that's another great, great time to make sure that they're not bullying each other. But you can safely keep leopard geckos together. That's it. That's leopard geckos in a nutshell. It's pretty easy, right? It really is. As long as you do your due diligence, you do your research, and you have everything set up before you come home, getting a leopard gecko is really simple and a great thing to do if you're really interested in keeping an animal and not sure if you really want to get into reptiles yet. This is the perfect starter animal for you, I think. One thing I wanted to mention too, if you want to win something from WWR, if it's something that you've been doing is following these videos or you like the channel, first of all, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It's only going to get us to the 600 subscribers that I've set as the goal uh, to give away this green WWR shirt, a brand new one, not the stinky one I've been wearing in this video. And as soon as we hit the 600 subs, if you comment on this video right here, uh, put your name down there, let, let me know that you want a shirt, hit the like button, be subscribed. I'm going to do a draw once we hit 600 subs, and uh, you're going to get this shirt if you win. Just send me your mailing address, I'll send it to you with a little thank you note, because I really do appreciate it. Thank you for coming back and watching this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. What should I talk about next week? There's a comment section for that. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.